Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary. Uh, this is Monday morning, the first day of the first work day of the new year, 2023. And we're going to start by cleaning up a couple of mandolins that we have already bound the tops on, number six and number seven in our batch. And we're just going to clean them up and, and get the final shapes and smooth out the edges of the binding and all like that. Clean them up and get them ready for the next step, which will be putting the necks in. So if you're ready, let's get started. Number six here has all of the binding glued on. Of course, there's a lot of glue squeeze out and Usually there's a just a little bit thicker than the binding the top is so it needs to, the wood needs to be sanded down to touch the binding and I kind of rough most of that out with believe it or not just a piece of sandpaper on the end of a drill and then we'll go tackle all these things by hand as well with the shapers to get the exact final shape that we're looking for. So this is number six. It'll eventually wind up in its new home in Texas, but not until we get this job done anyway. And now on to number seven. This is number seven. Number seven will go through the same process that you just got through watching number six go through. I'll take the string off, sand the sides down, trim up the edges, make final shaping and everything and put it in the box as well to await its neck. And so now number seven is ready to go which we'll slip it right down there in the box and till we get a neck built for it um believe it or not those two mandolins took most of monday it's pretty late in the afternoon my students will be here in right at a half an hour so i'm going to clean up and make sure all the instruments are in tune and that'll pretty much take care of my monday see you tomorrow It's Tuesday. Now on the job jar list for Tuesday is this mandolin right here, which is number eight, as you just got through looking at. Uh, we're going to put a couple of pieces of binding at least on it this one and this one here 
And then we have this last mandolin in the batch that doesn't have binding on it. It's one of the unnumbered ones, uh, the extra one that we've got. So we're going to go ahead and put a piece of, or start the binding job on it. And I've got some people coming over from North Carolina to bring a mandolin to look at. And if there's any time left in the day, then we're gonna start gathering the wood for the next, for this batch of mandolins. And we'll see what we've got, and what we need, and um, just what needs to be done before we can start putting necks of these instruments. So that's all the job jar list for today, Tuesday. Well, um, although yesterday went more or less as planned, it didn't go quite as far as planned. I did get a couple of pieces of binding glued on mandolin number eight, and I got the scroll carved out and ready to start the binding channel on the extra mandolin. But then I had uh, visitors down, and then Bonnie Shang hired me to go to uh, town to do some uh, errands, and so that's about where... I got shut down. Um, so today the job jar list really reads exactly like yesterday. We're going to put binding on mandolin number eight, uh, try to get the first piece of binding on uh, that extra mandolin, and then we're going to go for the next and try to make some sense out of that jumble of uh, wood and rough blanks and stuff that I've got laid out. So let's get started. So that's the next to the last piece of binding on mandolin number eight. And now we're going to work on this extra mandolin. Now we already have one extra mandolin that's bound in white. So I've decided to bind this one with black. There are two mandolins in this batch that have uh, black binding. And I thought, well, just in case something happened to one of those, it'd be nice if we had one bound in black. So we're going to have an extra one bound in black as well as the other one bound in white.
And so that puts the first piece of black binding on the last mandolin in the batch, that extra. And so now we're going to go pull some neck stock out and see what we've got and see what we don't have. Okay, I've dug out these five neck blanks. One, two, three, four, five. And this big chunk of wood that has not been cut at all. And then some of these in the boxes already have a neck picked out. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so here are these five necks. Now, one of them, I know the customers come by here already and pick this one out to go with mandolin number one. He's a local fellow, so he gets to come by and see his wood. Now, I'm just going to scatter these down through here as need be. And like I said, some of these in these boxes, these mandolins in the boxes, already have necks with them. However, number two doesn't, so I'm just going to randomly grab a neck there. Number three does not. Number four is the F style mandolin that's going to have an A style peg in it. So it already has its neck pretty much ready to install. Number five here has a neck that is going that already has the binding slot cut for it. So the customer for number five is going to get a little added benefit, a neck with binding. Number six, same story with number six. That neck already has a, a binding slot put in it, so number six is going to get that added benefit as well. Seven and eight, and I may go back and shift these around, but both of these are pretty close, and we want seven and eight to be brother and sisters, if at all possible. And don't get confused, but there's actually four mandolins or four carcasses that are competing right now for uh, mandolin number uh, nine and ten. We have two like this right here that already have the fretboards glued on. One of them we're putting binding on the peg head, and this one will take that same treatment as well. And then we have the two extra carcass bodies that don't have the necks in them that we're working on, just in case something goes wrong with one of these. So, neither one of those two have a neck. So we're going to take that board over there. That I showed you earlier. And we're just going to lay out uh, the template and just turn every one of these into the necks, into as many necks as we can get out of this board and add two to those extra men. Now, after that big board has been sawn up, we've got basically five neck blanks and some scrap for the ears. And the next step will be to prepare all of these necks uh, to have the truss rod slot cut, which means you want to make sure that everything is square and uh, the sides are parallel. And so it takes quite a while just to get everything set up to get that done but that's going to be the next step with these necks so i think i'll close the video off for today wednesday and pick back up tomorrow on thursday uh, and i'll spend the rest of the day doing what i just got to do saying uh, gathering all the stuff make sure that everything is good so that we can cut the truss rod slots and the truss rod pocket so that's what we're going to do. It is Thursday morning. Yesterday, I uh, 
full with these necks and by the time the dust settled I have 10 neck blanks, way too many, which is fine. And uh, they have all been rough shaped out. The fretboard surface has been sanded and the peg head surface has been sanded. And basically they are ready to have the truss rod slot and the truss rod pocket worked, which we will see how far we get done on that today. After we do our first order of business, which is to put another piece of binding on the black extra mandolin that we worked on yesterday and the last piece of binding on mandolin number eight so i'm going to do that first and then we'll just take all the steps to uh, work on on these necks for the rest of the day all right now this piece is glued on this mandolin and this piece is glued on that's all i can do there today And that is the final piece of binding on mandolin number eight. All right, let me describe this jig right here, which is going to put the, help me put on this table saw, the truss rod slots, the right size, and directly, completely right down the middle of this neck. And this jig works no matter how wide the net material is. We can do wide, thinner, thicker, doesn't matter. These pieces right here, if you can see, slide over. Got these spinner handles, the position. Got a tape measure here that's equal side, equal on both sides of the slot. This uh, thing has got a couple of rails here that ride right down in the slots on this table saw. The neck loads in much like this right here. Goes in, locks down there. In those slots and once we use this mechanism to slide this neck back and forth to put it on dead center then that uh, truss rod slot will be dead center in the middle of that neck regardless of how wide it is and the truss rods will fit right down in
And now we have a slot just wide enough for the truss rod to fit down in there nice and snug like. Everything works at the proper depth. And all we have to do now is just drill the access pocket hole. Well, I now have a whole pile of necks that have the truss rod slots cut in. And like I said before, all they need is the truss rod pocket. And I have a special machine that I put together to cut those truss rod pockets. And it's in the back room under about 20 tons of junk. And I need to dig it out. And so I'd say, believe it or not, digging it out is going to take the rest of the day. And unless something no bigger than a shoestring breaks, I'll show you that machine tomorrow. And there is the next to the last piece of binding on the last mandolin in this batch. So we're almost done with that. Now here's the machine that we're going to use to cut the truss rod pockets for the necks. I'll get a little closer here and you can see. Believe it or not, this used to be an old homemade lathe. You can tell they just basically hacked that out with an axe and I put some bearings in the end and a big long shaft through it and a drill chuck motor on it and you've got basically a horizontal boring machine or at least one part of a lathe at the other end of the machine you've got this tailstock that um, when I converted it into a machine that does only the truss rod pockets I just kind of totally ignore that I don't think you can see it from this camera angle but there's a hand crank back here that moves everything forward or backwards into that drill bit up front. And then this tray right here that actually slides back and forth inside these tracks. There's a mechanism or just a, a holding jig that the neck fits into and stays lined up on the center. And then we put everything together, lock it in. Turn it on, crank it into that saw uh, or that drill bit that we saw earlier, and let's just do one, and you can see what what the end result is. And here is the end result, a round hole just slightly larger than the square channel. Now all of the necks have got the truss rod pockets drilled in the truss rod slots. And the next job to do is to put on the peg head ears, that little extra strip of wood out here to make the peg heads wide enough to make a mandolin peg head out of. So I'll be uh, picking out and choosing wood for that here this afternoon. And it probably won't last all afternoon, but I already know that I'm going to get uh, uh, called upon to make a, run, a grocery store run later this afternoon. So that'll probably take up most of my day just getting the peg head ear material out and sorted through and the grocery store run and that'll pretty much take care of my Friday. And so I'm going to close this video off here. Uh, be sure to come back and check with us each and every week as many of you know. 
We do this every week. I'll uh, put up a video that shows you what all happens in the Ratliff Mandolin Workshop right here on the Ratliff Mandolin's Weekly Production Diary. My name is Audie. I bid you a good week, and I'll look for you next week. See you then.